when you were halfway through the study, three quarters of the way, you actually for the first time saw yeah. mm -hmm. a clinical intervention. I sat in on one of the one of the one of the uh, the interventions. Yes. And what was your first impression? I was extremely impressed by it. Um, you know, we uh, I was intrigued by a couple of things. One was the ability to identify the trauma and and the 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 some of the other causes of the trauma that related to the person's life. So this was an individual who had, who had cancer um, and had a lot, of, a lot of trauma from the cancer. And in looking at how uh, the, the person was evaluated with the muscle strength and the muscle testing, um, very quickly got to the fact that, that part of what was causing the actual trauma today was related to a trauma that had happened to this person back when they were seven. And then as that got explored a little bit, um, it turned out that this person, their parent had developed cancer, had developed colon cancer um, when, he, when uh, he was seven years old. And he remembered how horrible that was and how out of control he felt. And so now he was kind of projecting that trauma to him onto the trauma to his children now that he has cancer. Uh, and that was really one of the critical pieces of that emotional element. So I was very impressed at how that came out and in, you know, minutes, basically. I mean, it was, the whole thing happened in maybe five or ten minutes to really hone in very quickly on the, the, the moment in this individual's life that led him to having an even greater response and, and a more traumatic aspect when, when he had cancer. And, of course, that's an important part because lots of people have cancer and not everyone has this kind of emotional response to it. I mean, it's obviously always upsetting, but some people can deal with it more effectively than others. And sometimes it's these earlier issues, traumas and so forth that, that come back into the, to the, to the fray that cause that greater response in the moment for that individual. So I was very impressed by that. And then um, the, the other aspects of the, t of the technique to help the person start to work through it uh, and again, I mean, this was, this was the first session with that individual, so it didn't eliminate it in that moment, but it, it, it did improve it simply by getting him to kind of focus in on it, to utilize the, the, the various components of the technique, and, uh, and kind of walking out of there feeling like, one, there was an identification of some of the other aspects that went into the trauma, and two, um, a better feeling about that. It wasn't perfect yet. But uh, you know, a much much better feeling. And then, of course, when that same person came back three or four weeks later after completing the neuroemotional technique, then uh, the person was basically back to to you know a one or a okay two. Again. Yeah. So this is the first time you've been exposed to it. Right. You're 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 watching it as a clinician, but you're also watching it as a neuroscientist. Right. And what are you seeing? Hmm. Where are you making? Are you saying, well, this part of the amygdala is lighting up now, and now the memory center over here in the hippocampus? What are you doing this in your head while you're watching this, or are you being a clinician <laughs> just hoping the patient gets well? Uh, well, there's always the thought about well, what's happening in the brain, what that, what's you know what's being triggered. Um, certainly, the initial memory of the the earlier trauma as well as the current trauma. Uh, related to the autobiographical memories that we have, um, the emotional elements that we connect to those tr memories, and, and thinking about, okay, well, if this is what's happening now, how is this technique ultimately going to try to rework that, pro that physiological process so that the person doesn't respond anymore? But short of that, no, I, I, I didn't really have a clear thought as to exactly what would be happening. So what this says to me is you are uh, you're a professional, you've been a clinician, you're a neuroscientist, and so the process uh, that the patient went through when you first saw the neuroemotional technique being done made sense to you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know exactly what to expect, but it certainly it, it made sense in terms of how it was, it was being applied and trying to understand um, you know, the various elements that go into it. Again, you know, part of the issue is ultimately linking it back to those physiological processes, which is why I'm, I'm excited about our initial results with the brain imaging. But there's a lot for us, you know, a lot more for us to potentially do. We, we talked about the body, and there's a whole other aspect of the brain, which we haven't really mentioned yet, which are the neurotransmitters and all the chemicals in the brain. So when we're anxious, we release different neurotransmitters. When we calm down, we release other ones. Um, you know, could we ultimately do some type of brain scan to show that the, the calming, more positive emotional neurotransmitters are released as part of the neuroemotional technique uh, mechanism? And, and again, yet another question for us to think about in the future. 
Well, and I, and I can tell you, you mentioned my, my role as a clinician, and I see patients here, and I have uh, sent a number of my patients, because of this study, I've sent a number of my patients um, to, to Dr. Tobia because I've seen it work so well, and I've now seen it work you know, outside of the study in patients when I find that they have those kinds of traumatic issues, traumatic memories, whether it's related to whether it's related to a disease or whether it is cause, you know, part and parcel of the disease process that they have. And that, that is a whole other side of this, which is that there is a lot of patients, you know, certainly a lot of patients we see in integrative medicine that have chronic symptoms, chronic pain syndromes, um, uh, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel, which often, you know, as I always say to patients, you know, uh, they say, well, am I crazy? And I say, well, <laughs> well look, you know, if, if, if I made anybody's stomach hurt for, for seven years, you know, straight, you'd get a little crazy. I mean, it's, it's something that's going to cause issues with a person. But then we also talk about, well, part of it is how you deal with it. Part of it is how you deal with the other stressors in your life. And so we get into a discussion about, well, what, what's going on? And when I do get a sense from them that when they grew up, they had certain emotional traumas or abuse or something like that, that I feel like, wow, if we could make some inroads into helping them with that, how much will that actually help some of the other symptoms that they have? And, and, and it is a, it's all part of the process. So uh, I think that is, it becomes a very important part of clinical armamentarium. So in closing, this video is going to be seen by fellow professionals, academicians, and patients, and maybe donors. Uh, and so in closing, what I'd like for you to do, if you could, is what do you think about the future? What do you think? What can you see? for the future of mankind. Is there any open doorways that you can see for this with your background? Um, well, I, I think this is a, a, an immensely exciting area of research. Uh, you know, the ability to understand a very powerful technique, the neuroemotional technique, how it works, uh, why it works, and help to show people the physiological mechanisms that underlie what's going on with it. I think is enormously important. It, it, it helps to, you know, whenever we talk about the larger medical community, psychology and psychiatry and so forth, uh, the more data they have, the better they feel about it. And so when you can show people this physiological information, this physiological data, and how it links up to what's going on, and how it links up to the various components of the neuroemotional technique, I, I think there's some just really important pieces, things that can come out of that. I think it will help to convince people of the value of it. And, uh, and I think it will ultimately teach us more and more about who we are as human beings, how we work, how our brain and our body work together to ultimately help us to feel unwell or to feel well. And I think that this is, uh, th there's just so many different future directions that we can go uh, and looking at the, the different molecules in our body and in our brain, the, the physiological functions and the uh, energy in our body and our brain, and ultimately how this all ties in with the neuroemotional technique, all of that will be very, very important and very, very powerful information for the future.